Hello, this is Lance Wolf, and this is Iron Wolf Productions. And this is the Shield City, Sector A1764. A little history of what went into this design. Back in 1992, I was getting a little ahead of myself and building way too many models at once and rushing through designs. And originally, the Shield City was attached back in 92 to a giant space station and the idea was that these stations would have domes attached to them which cities and the idea was the shield city has to shield out the sun to control temperature and I realized I was kind of getting away from what I wanted which was kind of like the end point originally these shield cities would wind up in orbit without giving away too much of the story but that also meant that I had to scrap certain ideas so originally the space station was relegated to a shelf in a garage and became dusty until I was coming back to it for the director's guide and working out the prologue of the story meant I had to redesign the Syrup City and really scale it up. So first I had to figure out the infrastructure of the city. How would each dome look the same? Uh, the placement of the buildings that could maybe rearrange from each city and the overall look of the shield city with its shield glass. I had to work out every element of the city uh, where cargo lifts would be, uh, moisture pipes for the reactors, uh, landing pads, where the quantum trapping would be, uh, where the uh, main reactor would be, uh, vent pipes, even down to the shield glass, which was very most important because it had to be able to shield out 94% of sun, and then how to power the city and also remove the greenhouse gas. So I had to come up with solar bio panels and research this as a real thing and work out, and in the research discovering that a certain percentage of the city would have to be allocated to drying fields. So what part of the percentage of the city would have to go towards drying fields for the biofuel processing and food processing, and how much of the city's infrastructure would have to be allocated to that. So that's a little of what went into the design. And now the maquette assembly. The challenge here is to take what I originally did in 1992 and add some elements to it uh, to it work and work into the design. And remember, this is a maquette. A maquette is a different type of build. Uh, it's really uh, just to work things out. This is where I would work out a lot of shapes. And here I started making little bits and pieces, you know, little buildings. I wanted something like a Blade Runner type city. Uh, but instead of doing designs, I had to really first work out the space and what I was going to do. So then I had to get everything and paint all these little bits and elements a darker color, make them all gray for lighting issues and for reflection, and then start adding little paper uh, decals to create windows and buildings to kind of keep everything a certain theme and look, a sort of a very you know, utilitarian, dark, gray, industrial, complex type look to everything. Uh, with a, a certain look about it. And again, this is again working everything out. The, the struggle here is I built the initial part of this shield city back in 92 and couldn't figure out how to finish it at the time and then it was relegated to a space station and sat on a shelf. So realizing that I had to come back to it here, the real challenge here to just try to lay out everything and work it out. And again, without any budget. And usually when you're doing a maquette, a maquette is a rough draft. It's where you work all the, all the elements out. And in that sense, uh, it had to be just with whatever I had. There wasn't any budget to do this. And that's another reason why it had to be a maquette. To do this right, um, you would first do a maquette, work out all the elements you need. And then from that, uh, you, I, this would have to be done on a much larger scale to do it properly and, and do it justice. And in this case, uh, this would be the one time I would really need a 3D printer to do the windows the way I wanted. But again, as a maquette, the challenge here as an artist is to make do with what you have, work with what you have, uh, uh, doing what you can with what you got. Uh, good line from Burt Gummer from Tremors. <laughs> uh, I just, happened to, I just got done watching Tremors today, and that's why that's in my mind. But uh, really, it's worth, you know, making do with what you have. And that's what the challenge is a lot of time as an artist. And if you're a starving artist like me, uh, there isn't money to hardly do anything. You know, a glue, you know, spray glue would have been better, but you know, all I had that day was a glue stick. So you really make do. And here, again, the challenge was to take this original Shield City... Uh, that I did in 92 and then realized it was getting so far ahead of myself and thought, you know, I'll have to come back to it as the story progresses. And then it's just literally sat on a shelf. And then, like I said, it wound up attached to a space station. And then when I realized for the prologue, I had to come back and redo this. And I realized it was going to have to be a maquette, uh, a rough draft, uh, not super detailed, 
but enough that I could really work out some of the forms and themes here of how I wanted this shield city to look. Uh, and so a lot of it could be done with paper decals just to figure out, you know, lighting and structure and, and some of the textures inside the city. And at this point, um, I hadn't even thought if I was even going to light it. And again, budget was a massive concern here. There wasn't any budget. I was like doing three models at once over a seven month period, uh, finishing up the hovercraft and a couple other models, which did require a, a lot of time and budget. And then, of course, all of this is generating artwork as well for the director's guide. So, so much work is going into laying out and you're just, you're working forever on, on layouts and ideas and, and everything you're, you're generating is for the director's guide. So in this sense, this maquette was going to be a mock-up so I could use for art and this would also help with the final design of it. And that's just how it went or when it came about. And a lot of it is just working this out, trying to figure out what you're doing as you're going along. And again, to do this right, it would have to be done on a much larger scale. Uh, I'm assuming a 3D printer would really work great. Although, I always thought if I was going to do this on a larger scale, I would probably use resin and um, make clear resin cities so they could be properly lit from the you know, inside and then find some way to cover them in such a way so the city could be lit, an internally lit city. And in this case, this wasn't going to be that type of model. That's why it had to be a maquette. The challenge was, let's take this old uh, uh, shield city that I originally generated and then work it out from there. And then figuring as long as I have this, I could always come back and revisit it. And my plans are eventually to try to do it in 3D. Uh, Again, 3D has its place. I am a practical model builder, but in something like this, uh, this is where I'm assuming 3D would really work out well. I could really work out the scale of the city and, and do a certain amount of detail that I couldn't do in a model. Uh, so that's what I mean by, uh, in the sense that as a practical model builder, CG has its place. Uh, you want to have your practical models, but then you also want to have things that couldn't be achieved any other way. So, you know, again, like I said, CG has its place. Uh, and that's why it has to be used in the right way, to, uh, uh, and, and, the, and the right way and the best way is uh, is knowing where, where it can be applied the best. And like I said here, still having a physical mock-up, a maquette, really helped because there were so many ideas here that I was able to really work out ahead of time. And again, I've always had the overall vision in my mind, but I just was so getting ahead of myself at the original beginning of this back in 92. And as you can see here, you know, I had only built it to a point and never figured out how I was going to do the city. And as I was coming back to it, so much had to go into laying out the infrastructure. And uh, as you saw in the earlier works there, even down to the uh, solar bio panels, which again, I wasn't willing to go in and rebuild the original uh, shield city. I was just going to, what could I add minimally to it to bring it to life and then, f you know, actually build a city. And then I thought, I couldn't light it the way I wanted because uh, I would have had to have gotten a lot of LEDs at least to try to light the city from under to give the city a certain look. But again, this is a maquette. I'm basically just working this out. This is what a maquette really works best for. Here you can test ideas, make a rough draft, and from this um, I could now go forward and really build a nice city uh, in 3D or a much ramped up larger scale, which would definitely require uh, definitely require a, a 3D printer, uh, which is something I really need to invest in originally, eventually. But uh, again, I work, uh, the real challenge is working with nothing, literally. You know, these are bits and pieces that I had laying around. I tried to make some buildings, but then again, I just came up with shapes. And uh, once I had the, uh, the infrastructure laid out, I realized that that wouldn't change with each city except maybe just the placements of the buildings. And then still trying to achieve a certain dark gray sort of uh, Blade Runner-esque look to it. And again, not copy Blade Runner, I'm just saying that that, that feel that you get, uh, that film noir feel that, uh, that Blade Runner has with that beautiful dystopian city. Now here doing the windows, I finally figured out how I wanted to do this, and I wanted to use something that I called what I researched was called smart glass. Uh, you run a charge through it and the glass goes white. And that allows you to block out 94% of the sun. See, the whole point of these cities is the shield cuts down on the sun. It's The concept is it's a much harsher environment and these would be placed throughout the cities. And that's why the, the name has uh, 
why it's called Sector A. Uh, a is for the Americas. Uh, if one was built in uh, India, it would be, you know, for each country, if one were built in Japan, it would be J, uh, uh, Britain, B. And that's how you would know where these cities were being built. And then, yes, eventually they do wind up in orbit. But again, I don't want to give away too much of the story. Uh, you know, again, what I'm doing here is I'm just teasing uh, the story. You're getting to see elements, some, you know, how I'm going about this, getting some techniques uh, as I, you know, as I'm documenting what I'm doing for the director's guide and generating artwork. See, this maquette now will go into the director's guide, and this is how I'm laying it out. This is a way to show uh, this pro this uh, city, and uh, you know, you could only achieve it with a maquette. And then here, again, I had to figure out a way to do windows that could go from, you know, white, because that's how it's seen in the day when the current runs through it. See, the idea was you want smart glass because otherwise, if you wanted shutters and screens to cut out the light, it, it, that mechanically just wouldn't make sense. So another reason why it sat forever, you know, kind of there was more research that needed to go into it. And it took quite a while and it wasn't until I learned about smart glass that really decided to push the project forward and once I had that idea okay it could be done with smart glass that means I could block out all the light I want um, it would be minimal uh, screens and then at night you'd turn off the, the current and the windows would go clear and then that would reveal the lighting of the city and again I wanted the lighting of the city to be sort of like a, an off purple uh, light or have the city have a certain color and feel to it but again I didn't have any money for LEDs and it was something I can eventually come back to but I was in the position of I have some little uh, I guess you could call LED toys that have certain colors and I knew when you're working with printouts, uh, at least clear, uh, the blue light will turn purple. And I knew that would give me the right look I wanted. So again, I had to do these windows in two different ways. First, in, in of course, paper decals and cardboard, so I could at least illustrate the shield glass look when the shield glass is turned on, it's turned white, and then actually use the exact same pattern and print them out in a clear transparency. And then I'd have to back it so you could see it, which meant the most arduous part here would be I'd have to cut out every little piece uh, with an X-Acto knife. And that was just incredibly tedium and took a great deal of time. But uh, again, when you're doing maquettes, you're working with what you have. And a lot of times you don't have the budget for anything. Now, yes, here, a 3D printer would have been fantastic to do, even for the maquette. But again, you don't have that. And a lot of times in, in, in studios, when you're doing maquettes, uh, there isn't time, there isn't money. Uh, you know, your budget is, is depending, is stretched. And in my case, you know, there is no budget. Uh, you know, uh, the only thing this is costing me is actually just time. And again, the challenge of taking this old Shield City, uh, you know, piece of cardboard that had been sitting in a garage and almost forgotten. And when I learned about Shield Glass, you know, doing, still doing research and getting to a point of the director's guide where now I'm working on the prologue, I realized, you know, actually saying prologue probably is giving away more of the story than I should. Uh, but either way, uh, this just became uh, a really large task. And then here's the hardest part. Um, now I have to cut out every little triangle so the best way to do is just go through in one direction every line as many times as you can and then repeat it and then try to poke them out there's just no graceful way of doing this quickly uh, but it would take days to do this because see those are just plain little printouts and you need a white backing so they'll show up plus I also wanted it you know if you want to give it sort of a 3d look you need to have it actually not be perfect. It, it's enough that you can see elements of the white behind the printout and that would give it sort of a, uh, it would give dimension to the girders uh, for the shield glass. And so that, like I said, this was just amazingly tedious. And uh, on top of that, uh, I had uh, damaged my thumb working, uh, uh, changing a headlight. I, I got a carbon fiber jammed me in the thumb and I wound up with a, a horrible thumb infection uh, that lasted weeks. Uh, because I, uh, I wasn't aware <laughs> that I had a splinter uh, from a weird piece of carbon fiber. And, and I'm doing this, so it's amazing what you can go through as an artist. But here, as you can see, I'm cutting out every little piece. But I hope you're enjoying this um, a little bit of what goes into a maquette. And truly, a maquette is where you test out ideas and make do with whatever you have, you know, making do with what you have. 
and that's pretty much what is, is going into this project. And um, this, I think, required more design and research than most of the models I do. Every model I do, I try to uh, put in as much uh, logical progression and realism as I can. You know, I've, I've always referred to it as, par as the laws of parsimony, that the simplest way is be best, both economically and philosophically. And I know I say that a lot, but it is truly what rules my designs. Uh, what helped drive this is the fact that there wasn't any money. It's making do with little bits of pieces of plastic I could find, buttons, I made little cities. Uh, as best as I could and it's this helped drive the whole design and then as I'm going along you know having to work out the infrastructure of the city uh, when you get to the point where you can control gravity through quantum trapping fields then anything could be realized in the way of size and, and a build to be made lighter uh, the city sits in a sort of gantry uh, launch pad type gantry uh, or an umbilical gantry uh, that sits into it, but the concept is this city can levitate. And there are horizontal cooling pipes and, and, and water vapor pipes. Uh, the, the, it is a, it's been worked out on every possible level it can uh, to, to achieve this look. And then, you know, utilizing the thought of, uh, I always thought it was going to be solar panels, and that's what you see there in the original, but I realized to power the city and remove greenhouse gas, this required so much research into solar bio panels and then what it would require would be a solar screen something that would allow light through and then where you know uh, bio uh, fuel could be generated and uh, that's uh, a little bit of what's going into this maquette well again uh, I want to thank you so much for uh, watching this and uh, what went into this uh, <laughs> this uh, ridiculously long project uh, which, you know, it, you're trying out to do something simple and the amount of design, the artwork that went into this, and then, you know, as I'm going along, you know, the, this is why a maquette is so important because in a sense, the designs were being generated here. This is where the whole thing would come together through this maquette and the artwork it would generate. So again, thank you so much. Uh, now uh, you'll get to see the finished product. Please stay with it because I'll, it'll, it'll also take you through the shield glass changing and as well as it lit at night. Well, here is the finished maquette. And so much went into the design of uh, figuring out the solar bio panels and the shield glass. And uh, this is a very small mock-up. Uh, and again, I would if to do this right, I would have to do it much larger. But the concept, so much effort went into this maquette and with the maquettes it helped the design on so many levels. This helped me figure everything out even down to the transition of the shield glass for night and then the concept that this city would have quantum levitation which every little element actually serves a purpose. Uh, horizontal cooling towers uh, basically water vapors for a nuclear reactor that sits at the very bottom and those are vents for the biofuel processors that blow, that are blow out the bottom uh, and then these uh, solar bio panels which would have solar screens allowing enough light to get through to promote algae growth then taking all the greenhouse gas from the city to uh, process the algae growth drying fields within the city to generate biofuel and food so it was a self-contained world and each one has a sector and those uh, the name of each uh, uh, state uh, city uh, as a sector name based on wherever it's located such as uh, a is for the americas i know i've probably already stated this uh, if it was b it would be britain um, I, I had to come up with different ways to doing it so uh, certain names would not overlap shield city wise uh, but that's what went into this and the maquette serves such a wonderful pur purpose of creating uh, ideas where you work everything out in the design that way and it helped really take it to a, a certain level. Uh, there's a, basically the landing pad for the cargo lifts. There's also um, a hangar door. Those are the exhaust vents uh, for the uh, reactor that's located at the bottom. With this city capable of uh, generating quantum trapping fields, which means it's light and this means any structure can be built once you've conquered gravity. So of course this is in the future and the city is able to levitate and it is a self-contained world and this maquette came out much better than I thought it would. It was fun to build, it took time and again with a maquette you can really 
help work out ideas. And now with this maquette, I could then take this to um, a whole different level uh, in a next build. If I would have to do it on a much larger scale, uh, in much more detail. Uh, but again, that's what a maquette serves, and it's great. Uh, from this, I would use this as a reference for any 3D work I would do from this point forward, or any, any uh, 3D printing work. So again, uh, thank you so very much. Please enjoy the rest uh, of the video, where I take it through evening and into night, where you get to see it lit, and as well as the shields opened up so you can see the city revealed. Thank you so very much uh, for watching this. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy this little peek into the world I've created. My name is Lance Wolf, and this is Iron Wolf Productions. Thank you very much.